Coming up today on Houston Life, how a local man turned his love of paper and puzzles into beautiful works of art. And National Adopt a Sh Sheltered Pet Day is coming up. Learn how KPRC is teaming up with a local organization that can help you find your new best friend. Plus, local performers Dana Monique and Zay Romeo continue to knock out the competition on The Voice. Find out how they're preparing for their next round. And simple tips on how to get the most from your farm fresh produce all of that and more happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Houston Life. It is Tuesday, end of April, the 27th. I'm Courtney Savala. And I'm Derek Shore. So glad to have you with us today. Is it really already the end of the month? Yes. April showers bring May flowers. They I do. I just spit something. I know. I know Hopefully was. it went in the flowers. Did you see the pink supermoon last night? I did. Amazing, right? Yeah, and even the night before coming up, it looked so full and beautiful. It was great. We were actually out of the Astros game last night with a couple of friends, and the roof was open. It was a beautiful, beautiful night. And then the moon came up. It was like we were in a movie. It was lovely. I was outside in my slippers and pajamas with Oscar and and Orlando. That's where we were watching it. <laughs> well, that sounds even better because then after the game, you just roll into bed. You don't have to deal with the crowds. No, I just rolled, rolled out, watched the super moon. Okay, love him or leave him? Kanye. Kanye West. I know. I know. No comment. I mean, this is a title. It doesn't necessarily have anything to do with what he did except for what he wore. Okay. So his sneakers, his Yeezys, set a world well, it's not a record breaking. Uh, this is crazy. His Air Yeezys, they sold for $1.8 million. And this is a pair of shoes he once wore, is that yes, right? Yes, so he once wore them at the 2008 Grammys, wore them once, there they are. Oh no, this is the previous record. This is from May 2020, when a pair of 85 Air Jordan 1s worn by Michael Jordan, and those so sold for $560,000. Okay. Y'all, one? 0.8 mil for a pair of shoes. What is someone going to do with it? I mean, and that's the box that they come in? I don't... I, well, I hope they come in a box. Does it, I hope it has a bow on it. <laughs> <laughs> I just spent... Some wrapping paper, and they all And just worn once. I don't understand the fascination with sneakers, right? So we, one of our dear friends, Brandon... Hi, Brandon, if you're watching. Another Brandon, I okay, know. Okay, dear friend... <laughs> Oh, is that what we're calling him today? <laughs> My friend. <laughs> Brandon and I have another friend, Brandon, of Brad and Brandon. Lots of bees. Oh, I know, it's very confusing. Very, I'm confused. They we? have a, a thing for sneakers, though. Listen, sneaker heads are a big deal. And people go online and they will set timers yes. and countdowns for when, like, the new hot sneaker is released. Because if you don't have them, you're out. But here's the <sighs> thing. They're not $1.8 million in that realm. No, I mean, I feel like you can get a decent pair of sneakers for, I mean, you can get sneakers for 20 bucks at Costco, and they're great. Well, I do all the time. They're great, absolutely. But, but if 1. you're a, million? But, so, th this all goes back to the collection, the collections, right? So, okay. like, if you're a collector of things, you know, people spend all kinds of money on a, you know, a book or a pen or something. But, I, I mean, I'm just flabbergasted. Number, I mean, never will I be able to do that, but nor would I want to, but I'm just saying, it's crazy, right? Who the was, auction market? Well, so who bought the sneakers? Wasn't it like oh, some company who's, who's gonna like resell them or something? <laughs> I don't have that. I don't know, you, I, I'm not much of a go collector. To the Smithsonian. It could, but then what it do you might. do with it? We have some art on the walls, you know, like pictures on the walls at home, and we have plants in our home, but we don't have things just sort of like, we call them dust collectors, things that just sort of collect dust. My kids? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We have so much dust in our home. It's not even funny. But uh, it's just crazy. I, I don't collect anything. Like, I'm not on the auction market for anything. Mm -hmm. You know, I went to Round Top one time. Oh, yeah. And I tried, like, not during the antique festival. I, I definitely need to go there. But Lori, best friend Lori and I, yeah. her family, she, they have a family home in Carmine. So it's just right outside. Mm -hmm. And we went there one day. Had lovely time. And so, like, sifting through the stuff that's there trying to find a treasure, but I don't even know what I'm looking for. You know what I mean? But that's what makes Round Top so great. It's because lovely. the unexpected. I, out at Round Top, you know what I always love? I don't know why. 
old gas station signs. They're so cool. The giant gas station I signs. I like them in other people's yards. Like, I feel like in mine, it just doesn't look good. Well, where in your yard would you put it? Maybe by the pool, the maybe? Yard. Oh, maybe. You know. Yeah. I don't know. I yeah. love the gas station signs, or just different. I had a street sign once that said Courtney, Courtney Lane. <laughs> Where'd you get that? Someone gave it to me. Oh, was that like the day that wheelchair showed up in your front lawn? This was in college, so oh. it was in my dorm um, dorm room window, so they all knew where I lived. <laughs> <laughs> they who? I don't know. My brothers gave it to me. They gave, I think they, I don't know what happened. Somehow, some way, I got a Courtney Lane one day. I feel really uncomfortable all of a sudden. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't think that's legal to have street signs, though. Well, I didn't it? say it was real. Oh, okay. <laughs> like from a museum shop. So back to this celebrity thing and the Kanye West thing. So a celebrity wears a pair of shoes once, suddenly they're really valuable because this celebrity, no matter how irritating he might be, people like him. Right. Um, 1.8 million, that's a lot of money. But I, I, I don't know. I guess I just don't buy into the celebrity factor. Like, would you buy something that a celebrity wore just no. because it was significant? No. Or allegedly significant? I mean, no, because I'm out of that realm anyway. That's not even, I mean, it's not even a remote possibility. But wasn't there, you know, um, Cher's dresses or some, those, those have gone on the auction block, right? Bob Mackie, all of those. Same thing, if I'm guessing, that's where, if it was auctioned off from a house, right? Okay. And I think that's super cool. Uh, the Dolly Parton concert, you've been, right? What? You've never seen Dolly Isn't in that, concert? It's a travesty. Oh my gosh. And to any of our viewers, I know. You got to see Dolly in concert. I am clutching my own pearls right Which, now. Because oh, she it's a shame. is phenomenal. Well, typically there, they'll have some of her, her outfits that she has worn in past performances. And it's so cool because they're, they're behind glass, but you get to see exactly how tall Dolly is. Yeah, and she's it, teeny tiny. Yeah. Now, it's they so do cool. have something special like that. I forget what the actual. Uh, costume was at the Grand Old Opry oh. when I went there before. So they have different uh, coats and different things that are there behind the glass yeah. that you get to see who wore what. But it's it's just kind of mind boggling because she is super tiny. Yeah, I think it's. I mean, I understand the the obsession with celebrity and the fascination, all of that. I just don't know if I would need something like that, like Dolly Parton. I love her, but I don't know if I need one of her dresses hanging in my closet. What am I going to do with that? To say I have a Dolly Parton dress in my closet? But why? I don't know. But why? How about leave it out where, where all kinds of people can see it? What about going to see Princess Diana's wedding gown that's going to be on display? Oh, I would do that. Me too. I would do that. But that's also very nostalgic for me because I was a baby when she married Prince Charles. Yes. And my mom stayed up all night watching the wedding. So I sort of, I don't have memories from that time, but... I have memories from what my mom has told me. So Lovely I would go dress. see Diana's dress for I sure. I would too. I'll pass on the sneakers though. No, I'm not buying the sneakers, not pulling our money. But I do like your new kicks. Ooh, thanks. You know what? I wore these to the Astros game last night. Somehow they did not get dirty. I love it. I'm did a you careful have like person. Mariah Carey? Did you have people carrying you through the Pretty much. Minute Maid Park? <laughs> I was busy protecting my shoes. I did <laughs> drop my phone last night though and it broke. You did, I know. Yeah, very tragic. It happens. Okay, well, we're, this, this conversation is very riveting. It's Still to come, remember this be kind, rewind. Uh -oh. For one Texas woman, that's really the least of her worries. The item she never returned that had her facing a felony charge. I think I can guess what that item might be. Plus, Joe Sam is cooking up something special today. Joe, what you got going on? Derek and Courtney, you know, it's going to be really, really great when we talk about National Salad Month. But look at these salads. These are absolutely amazing and are all from local farms. We're going to tell you how to make this at home yourself when Houston Life returns. I have some eating to do. Okay, raise your hand if you've ever kept a library book too long or maybe a VHS tape back in the day for Blockbuster. But late fees. Oh, up, yeah, right. I did. Yep. A viral story. Listen to this, you guys. A Texas woman faced felony charges for not returning a VHS tape that was rented more than 20 years ago. Must have been some tape. <laughs> Her name is Karen McBride. She's a former Oklahoma resident found out about the felony. Um, and it was a felony embezzlement charge when she went to change her name after getting married in Texas. Okay. And here's the other caveat. She rented Sabrina the Teenage Witch back in 99. It was a movie? I know it was a TV show. It was also a movie? I guess. Oh. Okay. I know, but she thinks she's going to blame it on her roommate, must have rented it and never returned it. But... 
How, okay, but also, it not that store now closed? Uh, aren't all VHS movie rental yeah. places gone? They're gone, but apparently the charge is sticking. So what's going to happen to her? Well, she's, uh, they, they dropped them. Oh. The store's all closed in 20, 2008, right? <laughs> but could you imagine not knowing that that's on your, felony embezzlement that's is the charge. That's pretty major, and I can imagine not her Not felony, heart not returning the HS tape. <laughs> right. Felony <laughs> embezzlement. When she found this information out, I mean, going to change her name, it must have been pretty shocking news. I think I would be a little bit alarmed. Well, especially when you see embezzlement. You know, I'm sure it took some time to figure out through the like, weeds what exactly like this what was. I, I wonder if it's affected her like over the past couple decades if job wise she's had any issues with that I don't I would doubt it. I mean you think she'd go like try and figure it out, right? Yeah, and that was the only alert Well, I used to have I'm pretty sure that I have overdue library books Like I think once when I was moving I found library books that had never been returned and I don't know what happens at that point well, you've got a big bill somewhere. And maybe a felony embezzlement charge as Probably. well. Probably. Okay. Well, maybe to our viewers, maybe <laughs> you have some information to share with us. As always, we love hearing from you. What's something you might have now that you never returned? Join the conversation on our Houston Life Facebook page, and we will get to some of those comments later on in today's show. Okay, guys, moving on to our food segment today. In recognition of National Salad Month, why not upgrade your dishes with items from your own garden if Sounds you have one. To me. Yeah, Joe Sam is hanging out at uh, Dish Society with the head chef. And Joe, you're going to teach us how to create one of those beautiful salads? Yeah, you saw them earlier in the show, and we're going to show you exactly how they make them here at Dish Society. So you can probably do it in your own home from the gardens that you may have in your backyards. I'm here with Brandy, the mastermind behind these beautiful salads here. And we want to dive right into it. You have all the beautiful ingredients. Let's talk about the spread that we have here. So this is all from local farmers and markets here in town. We use a lot of uh, people, you know, to grow our lettuces, all of our produce and our vegetables. And so the idea is if you go to a farmer's market, you don't go to, go to a grocery store. Mm -hmm. and you want to make a salad, what to think about. So we have three different types of lettuces and we want to think about texture. So Absolutely. it's crunch, soft, a little bit of strong flavors. We have sweet with some uh, strawberries. Love the strawberries. We've got a little crunch with some cucumber. We've got a nice tangy goat cheese. Mm. And these are Texas candy pecans that are going to give us that extra texture. Now I like candy, so I'm going to have to Get pop on one it. of those in. <laughs> I like oh. it. Mm. So this is an easy way to make a dressing at home. I've just got a jar here with some garlic and lemon juice in it. Mm -hmm. You're going to pour that olive oil in there and you okay. just want to do it three times as much as what you had lemon juice. So keep going, keep, keep going, going, keep, keep going. going. There we go. There you go. That looks great. Perfect. We're going to throw that top on there. All right. And you do the shaky shake. Like a bartender. Yes, sir. Let's go ahead and do that. That's my favorite part. All right. <laughs> so this lemon vinaigrette, you can just shake up and leave in your fridge. And anytime you want to make a nice garden salad, oh, that's beautiful. you've got a perfect vinaigrette. So we're going to add some of that to this salad here. So just give me a little drizzle in there. A little drizzle. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> and then we're going to give this a nice toss. You want to give me a pinch of salt and pepper? I sure do. This so, is absolutely beautiful. And when we're doing this here at perfect. the Dish Society, this is something that people can take if they have in their own backyards and actually put together at home for their friends and family. Absolutely. So now we're going to pile this lettuce up. Mm-hmm. And while you're doing that, let's talk about really quickly so we can show the viewers these other beautiful sure. salads. What are the ones that we have up here? So we have a Cobb salad. Uh, it's got a nice uh, variety of turkey and tomatoes, a little blue cheese, corn. Uh, we've also got our Caesar salad with crispy chicken. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. That's a fan favorite, to say the My least. My favorite, too. That one's based on kale that's grown at Atkinson Farms here in uh, Houston. And then we've got our apple pecan salad, which is one of our favorites. A lot of people really love this salad. So I've just topped this with all those vegetables. Mm. We're going to take a little bit of pecans right over the top of it. And there we have it. And there you have it. The other thing you can do, go out in your garden, grab a little mint or basil. And Put top that it all off. Top, <laughs> get a little herbaceous in there, and you'll be set to go. Set to go and set for my mouth as well. So I'm <laughs> going to go ahead and take a bite. Courtney and Derek, look how beautiful this is. And we say anytime you have fried chicken in a salad, it's good because it's in a salad, right? Absolutely. So we're going to go ahead and take a bite and send things back to you guys in the studio. When we come back, we're going to be talking about what kind of juices they have here and how they're mixing in some booze with that juice as well. All you right. Sounds back good. To our studio. <laughs> All Thanks, right, Joe. Joe. See you in a bit. Coming up, they went from teammates to competitors. Find out how two local star performers made it through the knockout rounds on The Voice. Plus, Lauren Kelly is diving into a good book. Lauren, tell us about it. That's right. Coming up, a perfect way to celebrate National Tell Story Day. Local moms have a great message for kids about the life during the pandemic with their new book. Houston Life will be right back.
moms, Robin Goldstein and Julie Beasley, didn't know each other before the pandemic, even though their kids went to the same school. However, the ladies recently combined their writing and illustrating talents to share their new kids' book, Winona and Gus and the Coronavirus, just in time for National Tell-A-Story Day. The year 2020 is where the story begins. People working together to slow down a virus, to turn frowns to grins. So, Robin, you are the drawer. I remember you said you like to doodle a lot. And Julie, you're the writer, right? You were the storyteller. How did you come up with this story? And why don't you tell us what the story is about? Sure. You know, I was just so impressed with how children have dealt with this whole pandemic situation and decided to write a story about it. And I thought about how uh, brave kids have been and resilient. And so thought of the idea of two kids, brother and a sister, who through the eyes of them, what life has been like through the pandemic. So we follow them from the basics of finding out about a year ago that they weren't going to be going to school in person anymore. And then just following them and showing what it's been like not having typical birthday parties or going shopping, just the basic things, or maybe missing out on some sports and just showing how that's been for kids. I have nieces and nephews that range from seven all the way down to two, and they've just kind of been fighting back and forth over the copy that you ladies sent me. And I'll tell you why, because like you said, it's an easy read for parents to interact with their kids. And the pictures, Robin, that you've illustrated are really beautiful and really great for them to just follow along with. Thank you. And I think that it also sort of mirrors what was going on. I mean, I, I you know, there's my kids found the coolest thing was that they could find things that we did and, and that they could really relate to throughout the book. And I've heard that from other parents parents who've read it. It's sort of like a memory book. It's it not just tells how brave kids are, but it also sort of remembers and, and looks back on everything that happened during this past year. Well, Robin Goldstein and Julie Beasley, thank you so much for sharing your story of Winona and Gus and the coronavirus. I just, I love the book. I love the whole story behind it. I think it's a great, great story for kids, especially for today on National Tell a Story Day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Such great ladies. A link to how you can get a copy of Winona and Gus and the Coronavirus is now up at HoustonLife.tv. But don't try to say that too fast because that's a little tongue twisty. I, I love that they put this in a book. It is such real life conversation. And, you know, we forget at the end of the day, they are kids just looking for a little bit of normalcy. So Absolutely. to see it in a book, yeah. I think really helps. Even the fact that they couldn't get toilet paper, right? Yeah. Like that's a memory. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, Lauren. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Sure. Well, from a great book to a great show, The Voice returned last night with the knockout rounds and the Woodlands say Romeo continued to impress the judges. Oh, he sure did. And just last week, Houstonian Dana Monique held on to her spots on Team Nick. They are both, <clears throat> excuse me, joining us live to chat more about their latest performances. It is great to see you both. Okay, so still big smiles on your faces. Uh, we, it's been so nice checking in with you both throughout this competition. I know it's sort of like a slow burn where the pressure stays on. Just update us. How are you both feeling right now? I feel amazing. I mean, we still here. We, we're doing it. We, we're sharing our love with the world. And man, it, it, it feels amazing. <laughs> You know, I, um, when I first came here, I did not expect to be where I am. And it's been the coolest surprise and, you know, the, the best opportunity that I've ever had. It is so great. We love shining the spotlight and checking in with you guys. Of course, remember, Dana, last week you defended your spot on Team Nick <laughs> with your electrifying performance of Ike and Tina Turner's Nutbush, City Limits, one of my favorite songs, and Zay from the Woodlands, of course, last night. So wait a minute, let me back up, because at first you guys were on the same team. You were teammates, and now you're competitors. So, okay. How's the relationship? Are you guys still friends? <laughs> oh, like, no, oh, that's, of course. That's my baby. Like, these are my baby. You, gotta, you know, you got to remember, I'm a little bit older. So to them, I'm like, you know. That's Mama Dana right there. Yeah, that's right. Like, I, they're my babies, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm happy. I'm always like, yeah, you go. And of course, Kelly Zay stole you. And so you're still in the competition. Of course, your performance, amazing as well. She pushed the button and basically said, Nick messed up. I need you. So here's the thing. You guys are rocking it every episode. And you're repping Houston and you're singing your hearts out. I feel like the two of you really are standalones in this competition. Uh, you 
you know, you kind of tend to find sometimes that that'll happen. You know, when you have a lot of different people who do a different thing, right? And so, you know, you might have more of something than someone else. You know, it doesn't make you any better, but it just puts you in another category. Like, this is who you are. This is what you do. This is what you bring to the table. So it's just, it's kind of one of those things, you know? Yeah, and with music, um, there's a lot of unique things that happen with, between each person. Someone might be very good at this mm -hmm. and someone else might be very good at this. And I think when it comes to the show, it really matters as to who you are as an artist and knowing yourself and pushing yourself and knowing what you can do, what you cannot do. And the whole time you're there, just getting better at what you do. Yeah, learning new things. Learning new things, always. Okay, so give us a little behind the scenes. I mean, again, at this point in the competition, you both clearly are very comfortable there on stage. In fact, you're not just comfortable on stage, you both own the stage. Own it. <laughs> Bonafide celebrities already. Talk to us about what your days are like and how you are continuing just to recharge so you can bring it week after week. <sighs> Woo! Uh, the, the schedule, you know, is, is aggressive, but it's something that we signed up for. We knew exactly what we were getting into. We were just excited to do it. But just for us, in terms of, you know, we're making sure that we're in rehearsals. We're making sure that we're hydrated. We're making sure that when it's time to rest, we rest. You know, um, we're not going overboard, but it's all, it's, it, there's a flow to it. And, um, you know, Listen, even if we don't get it, we stay up all night, we still got to go get up and do what we got to do the next day. <laughs> so it don't really matter. But yeah. I think it's it's also just super important, at least for me, I know that knowing the song, especially your song, knowing it back to front as well as you can, knowing the lyrics, having things ready when you do go into these rehearsals and, you know, these fittings for clothes and everything and, this, and going onto the stage, that you are ready and giving your best performance and not going in there underprepared. I think oh, it's yeah. so important to give your best performance each time because for me, I don't want to go home on a performance that, you know, I'm not proud of. I want to be proud of it to never performance. We don't want you to go home either. We love cheering you guys on. And thanks for giving us a peek into the world because it's not just the episode. We understand, of course, your schedule oh, yes. and rehearsing and being part of the videos and everything that be, is part of that production. So keep making us proud, guys. We love cheering you on and good luck. Thank you so Thanks much for having, having us. for having us. Great to see you, Dana, Monique, and Zay. We love you back. <laughs> Remember, you can cheer on Dana and Zay by tuning into The Voice Mondays at 7 p.m. right here on KPRC2 because they need your vote, guys. They sure do. They're going places, both of them. Still to come on Houston Life, the Internet is chirping over the reason one Texas man was late to work. Plus, we're going to get a check of what Keith, Christine, and Frank have coming up at the top of the hour. Houston Life is back in two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek here with you on this Tuesday, right? It is a Tuesday. It is a Tuesday. I had to think about it for a second as well. Time now to hear what you had to say about our question of the day. What is something you have that you never returned? Hmm. Here are some of your comments. Rachel writes in, I still have a blockbuster DVD of Xanadu. Rachel, how do you have that? How do you have that? No late fees? No charges? <laughs> Tell embezzlement charge <laughs> i love it great movie by the way must have seen it a hundred times candace writes in a cassette i borrowed from my friend in the 80s otherwise known as a mixtape oh love I it loved mixtapes me too oh, man jennifer writes in sibling friends clothing movies books all kinds of kitchenware beach towels foldable chairs pens mark oh wow, wow. i'm not a thief <laughs> i just keep forgetting wow jennifer if you can't find anything jennifer has it uh, or just don't loan it to Jennifer <laughs> if you want to see it again. You know what? I, I can't think of anything that I have that I never returned other than those library books I think I found. Right. But my feeling is when you borrow some something from someone as the borrower, I believe it is the borrower's responsibility to say like, hey, I still have your thing. Yes. Hey, I owe you that money. Falls in your court. Because it's, it's awkward to be like, hey, could I get that thing back that you never right. returned? You shouldn't have to beg someone to give your no. stuff back. That's true. How about you? I don't have anything I don't think. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Let's just leave it there. Okay. No, I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right, let's check in with Keith, Christine, and Frank for a look at what's coming up at 4 o'clock. Any yeah. VHS tapes, Frank? Okay. Do, do you? Because I have a story. No, because I don't have a good story for this. <laughs> Derek. What? Did you ever return your library books? 
Okay, I have, okay, I have a story just, just here. Just put them on the spot. Okay? No, 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 because I, I would not consider myself a thief by any means, okay? I'm a very honest person, mm. but I'm not, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Back when I was in college, I returned home for a holiday, and my mom was like, honey, I just got a letter that says we owe $232 to the public library oh. for two books that you checked out like five years prior. Oh my, Christine. Pay up. <laughs> and they basically were like, we're gonna come after you. And I was like, oh my God, am I gonna get arrested? Wow. I forgot about that. So I feel like if you've not returned them, they might come after you. I never knew Man. this about you. Um, oh. Wow, okay, that's. <laughs> well, hey, I hope listen, you got the bill taken care of. It's considered theft. Uh, yeah, I, we know, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> that is well, stealing. Well, I didn't, yes, not what? returning something. Well, I didn't, I obviously, well, I was probably a freshman in high school Accident. and forgot. You know, we're, I was the, juggling we're, a lot. We're always the last ones to know. We have a criminal <laughs> working I beside forgot. us. I forgot, I forgot. God. Yes. I Where's like, my I Mercedes? I forgot. Checking out that book on wildflowers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Where's where, where's it my credit card? Oh my gosh, pay. I forgot to give your credit card back. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was five years later, though. It wasn't a fun, wasn't oh. a fun bill to pay. Oh man. Well, well, it sounds like an honest mistake to me, Christine. It definitely, you know oh, it definitely was. Trust me. Yeah. Well, but just a forewarning. A few, few. If you have library line. books at home, <laughs> the library police will come after you. Okay, I'll double check. I borrowed my mother's personality, and I have not given it back. Awesome. Well, you, you just posted a beautiful mom. photo of her too, yes. Frank. She's doing well. Her, she's oh, good. So you know, good. Dementia, you thrive one day, the next yeah. day you don't. Yeah. Today was a good day. Lucy. She awesome. looked great. Awesome. I love that photo. Yes, yeah, so that was a beautiful photo. Thank y'all. Hey, right. so the weather outside. Yeah, not such a beautiful yeah. photo. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not beautiful like Could it be was worse. yesterday. I know, yesterday was a lot prettier. Clouds more than anything with temperatures in the upper 70s and low 80s. Galveston at 77. Speaking of which, another coastal flood advisory from midnight tonight until 6 o'clock tomorrow, so pretty much all day Wednesday. Clear from High Island all the way down to Baffin Bay. Watch for water there along the uh, islands. Flooding of parks, lots, low-lying roads. Just be careful. In the meantime, that looks like a real mess of rain. Nothing's reaching the ground, so it's not. It's just a lot of cloud cover coming in. That will change a little bit by Thursday. There's this front out here, but watching the dry line, these are some dry line storms with a tornado warning on one of those out in Texas. That th thunderstorm watch until 9, but it's that front we're going to have to watch for. Right now, the severe weather threat is well to our west, and it pretty much stays there even into tomorrow. But the front will be on the way. It's a slow goer, it looks like. So tomorrow, 6 a.m., a few showers out west, but again, not much into the Houston area. So we remain fairly dry right on into Thursday. And then the front starts to move in. That's 8 a.m. We see these showers, but nothing on the severe side, it looks like right now. But it's going to be something we're going to have to watch. And then these showers down here, they want to move along the coast for Friday and Saturday. So the weekend isn't a washout, but it may not be as stellar as I had hoped. It's going to be cloudy and warm, that's for sure, with these late week storms. And then right now, I'll call it a touch and go weekend. Okay. You can borrow my umbrella, just give it back. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't leave it to me because it might take you five years to get it back. <laughs> All right, Frank, thank you, sir. All right, that is a look at weather. We're going to look at some other stories that we're going to be covering at 4 o'clock as well. Big news involving Harris County Sheriff Ed Gonzalez. He's been nominated by President Joe Biden to be the Director of Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, of course. Reaction from community leaders and ultimately what it means for people who live in Harris County. Yeah, plus President Biden announcing new guidelines for wearing masks in public, especially when it comes to being outdoors. Our health reporter Haley Hernandez is going to be breaking down the new rules and what they mean for you. And finally, Statues are often points of discussion, and this statue in North Texas is no different. The story behind the mule statue and why it's been a source of controversy. In the meantime, I'm going to get back to my desk and make sure nothing's missing because <laughs> someone may have forgotten. You know, to I give probably I me. probably stole a few snacks. Those are our community <laughs> snacks, oh. though. Oh, okay, now it's you community. can't change the rules now that you know. Now in public, that it's one community. time. Okay. All, right. <laughs> All right, guys, you sort that out. Uh, we will. Got some time before we will. Four we're going to talk about this later. Okay. See you. Okay. <laughs> See you for it. Okay, we're going to shift gears now from traffic to forgetting to set the alarm. Most of us have had an excuse for getting to work late, but check this out. For one San Antonio man, his way to work was disturbed by this. And there it is. There we go. Oh my that is goodness. a peacock standing in the doorway of his building. Twitter user Jim Daly 77 posted this photo of that beautiful bird perched at his work entrance. And wow, it's it doesn't look like it's standing. It looks like it's laying down. Yeah, very comfortable. But I can see why he wouldn't want to step over it. No, aren't they? And peacocks can be a little aggressive, I think. And they can be kind of loud as well. The tweet yeah. has since gone viral with people sharing their most memorable late excuses. Uh, yeah, the peacock was blocking the door. <laughs>
I went home. <laughs> I mean, but that's like a real, that's not an excuse. That's just the reality of the situation. He wasn't right. using that as an excuse. No, this was, you know, can't come in. Peacock won't let me. Yeah, I mean, I'm varying degrees of late all the time. Peacocks. There we go. Yeah, it just happens. All right, when we come back, how you can help one of the thousands of adoptable pets in the Houston area find a forever home. And get to know a local eco artist making a difference in the lives of children with disabilities. That and so much more when Houston Life returns. Okay, if you guys are looking for a forever family member, National Adopt a Pet Shelter Day is this Friday. And to celebrate, we're highlighting a special partnership between KPRC and local animal welfare organizations. Joining us now to discuss their initiative to raise awareness for shelter pets is Best Friends Animal Society communication strategist, Carrie McKeel. Hi, Carrie, and who do you have with you? <laughs> Hi, how are you? I've got Toulouse. To he is loose. a super soft, young, sweet kitty. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's named after Front City. I love it. So cute. And I know we can get through so much more of uh, Toulouse does not want to be held. <laughs> Let's no, get to on, uh, the nitty around. gritty here because each year within Houston, this is such a staggering number. More than 40,000 animals enter local animal shelters. And let's talk about, and that's basically enough to fill Minute Maid Stadium. So yeah. let's talk about the need here from dogs to cats. I mean, th there is something for everybody. Yeah, you know, that's a that's a big number. And that's just really mainly two shelters within our Houston community. That's not including all of the shelters that are in the greater Houston area. Texas is also nationally ranked only second to California for the most healthy adoptable dogs and cats killed in shelters. But as a community, we can change that by choosing to adopt. And the way that we do that is coming up on Friday, of course, April 30th, raises awareness for thousands of these pets that are waiting for adoption. And like you said, these are these are uh, animals and pets that are in uh, shelters that can be saved and they're ready to go home. And I have a feeling there's so many stories about um, dogs and cats who've been adopted. It's like they know, they know they've been saved. Yeah, and you know, especially during the pandemic, we know that pets have played an integral role in our daily lives, you know, providing companionship during social isolation, emotional support as we face difficult circumstances, or just plain entertainment. So over the last year, more than ever, pets have really proved to be our best friends. And so we are super excited to be teaming up with KPRC and Power Wizard and several local animal shelters throughout the greater Houston area for a series of events to celebrate National Adopt a Shelter Pet Day this weekend. I love and it. Okay, we are also looking at some of these um, animals that are available. So the pictures that we're seeing on our screen right now, including this one, love this photo right here. So we have basically a preview of this event. We're teaming up, of course, yes. this is KPRC, Power Wizard, and several local shelters. We do want to mention that our own Lisa Hernandez and Justin Stapleton are going to host as well. But can you give us a preview of who's available? Yeah, so... Um, on Friday, April 30th, which is actually National Best Friend or National Adopt a Shelter Pet Day, we will be holding this preview on Instagram. Um, so you need to go to Best Friends uh, Houston Instagram. You'll be able to catch it there. We're going to have eight shelters throughout the greater Houston area participating with us, and each of us will have animals in the community on the show with us. So viewers will get to see a little sneak peek. I love and that. There's also going to be an in-person event as well. Exactly. And then Saturday and Sunday, we're going to be doing in-person adoption events throughout the city. Um, Best Friends will be at Memorial, um, at City Center and Memorial from 10 to 4, um, doing in-person and adoptions and then uh, for a full listing you can visit our website and we have a complete listing of where all of those our shelter partner locations are and they are all going to be doing in-person adoption events from their location. That is so great. I mean, there are so many great um, adoptable animals that are there, and we hope that they all get adopted as well. And Carrie, thanks so much for joining us today. Great event. I know it's going to be successful. 
Thank you so much for having me. Of course. And to find out more about this upcoming event, all you need to do is head to our website, HoustonLife.tv. And don't forget, if you head over to their Instagram page, you're going to get a preview of all the things that are happening. And of course, Lisa Hernandez and Justin Stapleton will be helping with that event as well. So again, this is happening on Friday. That's the virtual event for National um, Adoption Day. And then in-person event, May 1st and May 2nd. All the information is on Houston Life. TV. Now we're going to send things over to Derek, who has another great way to give back to the community. Hey. Thanks, Courtney. You're going to love this next story. At a young age, his passion for recycling, cutting, and tearing paper developed into a way to create unique pieces of art. Now at age 25, he's an award-winning eco-artist committing to making the world a better place. His name is Grant Monnier, and he joins us now with more on his extraordinary journey. Grant, welcome to Houston Life. Hi, Derek. Great to see you. And tell us a little bit about your background. At what age did you realize you had this interest in art and fascination with cutting and creating? Well, since I was four years old, I've been coloring, drawing, tearing with paper. And really, the art is a way to help soothe my autism anxieties. But I didn't become an official artist until around 2011 after I won my first Austin Rodeo Grand Championship. After I won that, what started out as a homeschool art project, it turned into a part-time job, a full-time job, and then an overtime job. That is fantastic. Very well said. At six years old, uh, you were diagnosed on the spectrum, and you mentioned some of your awards. In fact, it's such a long list, uh, it's going to take a while to get through. Your art has been featured in the Texas State Capitol, the United States Capitol, the United Nations. Uh, by age 15, you were winning local and state competitions with Eco Art. So we talked about the process of cutting and tearing and pasting. Describe to us exactly what is eco art eco art to what i do is i take recycled paper materials i don't use paint and i create beautiful eco art masterpieces like the one you see in the picture right there and one behind me i just take all these materials they can be calendars posters magazines and puzzle pieces and more all to create beautiful eco art well, and what's really cool about uh, the work that you do, Grant, I love seeing some of these photos here. Is that your mom? That's her. Oh, lovely. Very nice. You recently raised $30,000 uh, by selling one mm -hmm. of your art pieces for Be an Angel. That's an organization that provides help uh, for children living with disabilities or other challenges. So at what point did you realize that you have this power to use your gift to do, to do good things in the world? Well, like I said, when it all became in, came a business, people wanted to know more about my art and they wanted to purchase some as well. You can go on my website, jigsawgrant.com. You can find my originals, you can find my books, you can find my prints and more information about me. And I gotta tell you that night, I, I'm gonna be honest, before I got up on that stage, I was nervous. Cause I'm hearing all these other auction items going for like 20, 25,000 and my art pieces usually go for like four or 5,000. But when I got up on that stage and I gave my speech to help raise money for my friends with disabilities and challenges, everything was going by so fast when the auction started. One minute my art piece was at 18,000, then at 23,000 and then 28,000. And then when it hit $30,000, my mind was just blown away i was the highest bid of the night that and is incredible that's a really big number and and i'm sure an amazing feeling we do grant have some uh some of your art here in studio b today i think we can grab a shot of that and perhaps you can tell our viewers uh what your inspiration was for some of these pieces that the center one looks like starry starry night yeah that is actually a tribute to vintage van gogh's starry night but that one, mine, is called Stars at Night, created using my cycle materials and, of course, my signature mark, puzzle pieces. 
Very, very nice. Well, they're absolutely beautiful, and we're seeing some video now, a time-lapse video of just how detailed you are and how much time it takes to create these pieces. So thank you for lending uh, your time and your talents to our viewers today here at Houston Life. And Grant, I'm going to see you tomorrow night for a special event. That's right. Looking forward to it. All right. I'll see you then. We're going to tell our viewers about that right now. Grant Monnier, thanks so much for your time. That event, KPRC2 Insiders are invited to join with Grant Monnier tomorrow at 1 p.m. It's a virtual art demonstration I will be hosting along with KPRC2 meteorologist Justin Stapleton. Insiders can find the link to RSVP on their dashboard right now or visit clicktohouston.com for more details on how to participate. Very nice and impressive young man. All right, now let's check in with Joe, who is helping us eat a little healthier this afternoon. Hi, Joe. Hey, Derek and Cody. Well, you know, a little healthier. We're talking about these fruit and veggie juices, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be boozing them up a bit with some tequila, a marriage made in heaven. We're going to tell you all about how they do that here at Dish Society when Houston Life returns. Back here to Houston Life, we are here at the Dish Society talking all about those amazing garden products and produce that you have in your own backyard, but you know where else they have it at? Here at Dish Society, and they're making some amazing drinks. We just finished <laughs> demolishing those salads <laughs> that you made here for us, Brandy. Good. Now it's time to wash it all down with these juices. Let's yes. talk about them. So we have our beets by dish, so this is all based on beets, carrot, a little bit of ginger. Uh, we've got our green society that's based off of kale, spinach, a little ginger as well. And this is going to be the show of like the, the segment today. <laughs> yes. This is our entry level. Uh, it's got pineapple, orange, little carrot in it. We're going to spice this up. Yes, let's do it. Order one of these juices, go home, we'll make one as a cocktail. <laughs> so if you want to just put a little bit of that in here, it'll be easier for us to portion out. Absolutely. And, uh, we're going to add a little bit of tequila here. Okay. So oh, I love the tequila. Go ahead and go shot ahead. Of tequila. Pour that. <laughs> we're going to pour some of that juice in here. Okay. And let's do one more shot of that. I think that sounds good. Oh, yeah. One more shot of the tequila or the juice? Uh, one more shot of the juice. <laughs> we're going to keep it healthy with just a little bit of splash to it. There we go. Okay. All right. So this is going to be a nice, pretty orange color. We're going to shake this up. I love the shake. You're a professional. Yeah, you mu you must have been doing that. this for years. You want to give of, me a little ice there too? Absolutely. Let's tell everybody how long you have been doing this and making these amazing drinks and salads here. Well, I've been with Dish since the beginning of the year, and we've got a lot of fun stuff coming. Uh, new menu items, uh, celebrating some new uh, produce that's coming into the, the season in the fall. We're going to garnish this with a little bit of lime. And then the trick to doing herbs in a drink is you got to slap it. Oh, yeah. Let's go. So, so we're just, I'm going to let you do it. All right. Put that in your hand. Give it a nice slap. <laughs> Perfect. We're going to set that right on top. All right. There so we've we just taken that nice, fresh juice, kicked it up with a little tequila for a, you know, nice Tuesday afternoon. And there we have it. Brandy, you're amazing, <laughs> of course. And we want to just go ahead and down this all right now. Courtney, Derek, we're going to taste this and send it on back to you guys here. Mm. Don't down it. Just take Man, little sips so wow. you can enjoy it. Take your time. <laughs> I think We're I jealous. might have to take the whole thing and we're going to have to go straight home. Okay. <laughs> All right, Joe. Cheers to that. Thanks mm. so much. After the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show, including a pair of Conroe filmmakers revisiting their childhood. And as we go to break, let's check in with Nichelle Turner for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight. Hey, Nichelle. Derek and Courtney tune into ET tonight for Oprah. New revelations about her traumatic past. Plus, the Britney Spears conservatorship drama continues, and the office's Kate Flannery guest co host. That's tonight at 6 30 right here on KPRC 2. Don't go anywhere. Houston Life will be right back. Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, see how two childhood friends from Conroe ended up directing a film called The Orange Years. It's all about the rise of Nickelodeon. And we're off to the races when we meet with two local retailers putting you on the fast track with some Kentucky Derby fashion tips. Oh, something tells me you have some nice Kentucky Derby hats. Fascinators. Fascinators. I'll bring one in for you tomorrow. Okay, too. that would be great. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us today on Houston Life. We're going to send it over to our friends over in Studio A, Keith and Christine, for the News at 4.